he thought, you're the first person to ever actually film this. Get ready for something amazing this week on History Seekers. My, my friend and uh, really Clinton buddy and uh, great historian is uh, Robert McDaniel. Robert lives up in North Alabama, and he is a wonderful historian. A lot of people call him the Relic Doctor. He's done some repairs, uh, uh, really good. On uh, some things should be repaired, and some things shouldn't, in my opinion. But uh, that's Robert. And uh, Robert and I uh, were going to a place in Mississippi uh, about 20 years ago, and. Uh, I went there with him a couple of times, and uh, then he went back a lot and and uh, found most uh, most everything and found everything we're fixing to talk about. Robert did, and uh, I found very little. And I also had a guy scare the hell out of me by putting a pistol in my face, and uh, uh, I didn't like that much. So I never went back anymore over there. But where it is, uh, it, it's about. Nathan Bedford Forrest, and uh, he's one of my heroes. My oldest son's named Forrest. And when Nathan Bedford Forrest, boyhood home is in Tennessee. And I may get some of these details wrong because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm old and senile. But uh, after his father died, Forrest was the oldest sibling. And the way I understand it is uh, the mother moved back to Mississippi to the Beck family property. And they moved to a little town, a little community called Salem, Mississippi. Salem doesn't exist anymore. It's like a lot of Civil War places you read about. They either moved or they just don't exist. Hard to find out where they were, but anyway, Robert couldn't find anything because he's, he's smart. And so he found where the family lived, not, not far as boyhood home, but sort of the middle home. Before he went off uh, to war, he, he did go to war twice. He went to the, the Civil War, of course, where he became a three-star Confederate general. but. Before that, he went off to the Mexican War. And uh, he never got to Mexico, as I understand it, but he was in the Army, in the U.S. Army, and uh, was made it as far as Texas, and then I think the war was over, and uh, he made his way back home. And, and so what we're talking about is that home, uh, not, probably not long after that, I think Forrest went often uh, lived with and worked with uh, his uncle and uh, never lived there anymore. But when, when he was at this place, he talks about taking care of his siblings. And Robert, over many trips, found the stuff that's in this case at that forest home. have a hammer, sort of a homemade hammer, might have belonged to Forrest Daddy, and the Forrest had it and used it. Forrest talked about, in one of the books I read, that he made, uh, he made shoes for his uh, siblings, his younger siblings. And then uh, Robert had dug all these toe pieces and uh, that were made for shoes to to protect the so they didn't wear out as fast and I'm thinking these were made by Nathan Bedford Forrest. A good chance. A lot of this stuff in here probably touched by the great general. There are a few Civil War bullets in there. This is a, a Sharps, because I think Forrest's mother still lived there during the war. And so soldiers would have been around there. That is Forrest's mother. And there's, there's some whittle bullets, quite a few. There's uh, 
Here's another whittle bullet. This one looks like it might have been used as a uh, maybe a nipple protector on, on a rifle, but it's. I think it was a French triangle at one time. Yeah, it looks like a French triangle. Mm -hmm, but it's all whittled up. They were using it for something. And then this is an interesting piece here. It's a, it's, and not, you know, we will see it, but it's, uh, let's see if I can get it where I can even see it. We'll put a picture in the, uh, in the video where they can get a close up of it, and I'll try to get close up. It, it's, it's a coin, and it, it's dated 1840, I could see it a little while ago. I think 1843, and Robert says it's a counterfeit coin, and Robert knows, so, uh, and these grooves, I don't know what they're on there for, maybe somebody took a file to see if it was gold or not, but anyway, it's it's not gold, and uh, Robert says it's a, it's a counterfeit coin, so maybe it was a, a, a counterfeit gold uh, $2 or something like that, I don't know. Here's a bleeder that was found at the site. The iron parts rusted off, but uh, that's that's a bleeder. Uh, this is a, a powder measure. It was adjustable at one time on this side, and that had to do with a measuring powder. And there's a piece right there that looks like a bottom of another one. Maybe that, that, maybe that was uh, part of that. Uh, but it was a, adjustable there. And I think it measured powder, uh, gunpowder. And there's a few buttons. There's a Yankee uh, infantry button, which means I, I don't even know whether that's, uh, let's see. Looks like a blank back. I don't know what they would have had during the Mexican War, whether that could be that old. Maybe somebody looking at this video knows a lot more than me because I'm just a, an accumulator. But a Yankee infantry button. If it's Mexican War, I'd like to know because that would be old Bedford Forest. And this belt buckle. I remember Forrest went off to war in the 1840s and he came back. He was in the U.S. Army. This is an 1839 U.S. infantry plate. And I like to think it belonged to Nathan Bedford Forrest and then he brought it back there. Whether, I don't know for sure, but this is from his home site. This is where he came back to. This is what this is. Robert Robert found all this stuff. I didn't find any of it. Here's a, a bung would you drive into a, a, a barrel to, to get water or whatever, you know, whiskey or whatever they were doing. That's from the house. And remains, of, you always find harmonica pieces on battlefields and that's the most common um, musical thing to find <laughs> and uh, homemade hinge from the door R wrought iron and, and beat out uh, this is Robert said this was a, a homemade hook but I think it's a trace chain hook off a cannon it's probably threaded in there and it's really a nut this is a nut and for uh, it looks exactly the same as a trace chain hook would uh, be on a on a cannon. Here's a couple of decorative type pieces. Might have belonged to his mother or something. I don't know. This one's actually pretty thick and heavy. It's thick enough to to be a real buckle. It's got some wires there. Could have been a sash sash buckle. Here's a piece of a big watering bit, a broken piece of a stirrup, pocket knife. I don't 
don't know what that is. Probably, a, yeah, that's that's another piece of a bit. <coughs> the bit would have gone out here and here, and then this would have gone in the U right here and over to the other side, broken bit. And these are her scissors where she'd make clothes. Uh, lots of various interesting, that was her, probably her best piece of jewelry, who knows. But I like to think this is, a, I want all this to be up in, uh, in Tennessee at the Sons of Confederate Veterans uh, uh, Museum. And uh, all found by Robert McDaniel. And it's from Nathan Bedford Forrest, one time home. Yeah, this is uh, very interesting to me, and uh, actually, uh, Heath, uh, you're the first person to ever actually film this. Uh, I've never, uh, it's very interesting, but I, I just, nobody's ever filmed it, so you got a, uh, what, are, what are the reporters call it? I don't know. A scoop. A scoop. You got a scoop. <laughs> Steve, we appreciate you sharing that with us, and, and all of the History Seekers uh, viewers. If you guys are not subscribed already, go down and hit the subscribe button and be sure to check out Steve's channel. Uh, Steve puts a lot of good information out on his channel uh, on a lot of stuff and uh, we'll put that link in the description box below also.